Ta-da! <laughs> Gosh, that's just so freaking insane. So when I decided to buy this building, I knew I wanted to open up for more custom orders. And what is a cooler opportunity than building a conference table for the business literally right next door? The brothers over at East End Plumbing and Mechanical brought us not only a bottle of booze, but an opportunity to help them finish out their brand new showroom with an awesome conference table. They had a kind of an idea of something that they were looking for. I put my spin on it, they spun, we spun. We came to the conclusion that a larger scale walnut live edge table with their branding in the center would be perfect for what they're trying to do in this space. So you guys remember that sawmill we visited? Well, it's time we make something out of these walnuts. Don't worry, Jordan. I literally was no. coming to help you. <laughs> Zero plan, he just straight went for it. How excited. Let's lay these out on some saw horses first. You're on the back out of me. That was the most awful lifting technique I've ever seen. <laughs> Let's start with them flat, and then we'll start kind of doing a little bit more layout. Cause we might make a curveball move here, and I will address that down the line. What? We may. Well, don't tell them. They're supposed to follow along. I quit this job. You can't. Your name's on everything. Damn it! <laughs> How far? Will it go? Oh. Dad, you're done. You're done. Oh. It was a good one. That's a keeper. Fine. I didn't have any tools. It'll be fine. <laughs> it's gonna blow off anyway. I'm gonna finish this side, No. I didn't have a chisel, it was stolen. Would this one make sense to run both at the same time? That's what I was kind of thinking. You wanna do cup up or cup down? I like cup down. Okay, we'll do cup down. This is less shins. I literally actually think I taught you that, so. I know we have no business doing it, but what if we built a joint here big enough to push the slab across? No. Put the longest one on the wall. And like, and it'll always have a shelf, and we'll always keep it as the longest bark run. Jordan, this one might be over four feet. Be gentle, it's cracking. Is that cheating? Or do you like? I don't know. There's no rules. It's like it's because it's a new game. Yeah. It's like reinventing basketball in North Korea. I don't know. That's a good run. That's a good one. Can we get no, one of the fast like... measuring tape thing? <laughs> well, no, the Jordan, it's going on the wall. Did you just break it? Yeah. Oh, that was fun. That was good. So this bark run here. 50 and 7 eighths. Not bad, son. Do I sign it? Maybe we should make a little shelf. Bring it through. Get a little. Congratulations, son. First thing you've ever done, been worthy of the wall. Now, let's actually build something. All right, they're looking, they're actually looking sick, Jordan. Yeah. These are some really good wood, which is kind of surprising. I'm loving it. We're gonna get these things off of Miss Piggy here and then uh, start messing with how we wanna lay them out. So we've got Tony and Art from next door at East End Plumbing. And these are their slabs that you guys know. So we've got two, these are called uh, sister slabs, right? So they came out of the tree, one on top of the other. You can kind of see here, if you look at this, and you look at this. Just get a look at that. Oh yeah. They're mirrored, they're open up like a book, right? Option number one is the book match. We take these two slabs, we cut them straight line here, bring them together, and then the table will be oriented just like this. Okay. Keep that in your mind. Option number two. No, wow. That's really cool. I like that. Yeah, you'll have the splay on both sides, and we can also trim down one of these, uh, um, you tell why. But the choice is, is yours. yours. They're so beautiful. I mean, I, on so much of this, I like want to defer to your artistic, you know, kind of like how you believe the wood speaking to you because it's just so freaking amazing. It's some good stuff. I'm personally a big oh. fan of the book match because the book match is going to give you a really cool look of, uh, of a mirror image of the grain on both sides. This tree grew like this, okay? And we had to take a bunch of material off in order to get them flat. But so when you think about it, a book opening, it's gonna open like this. Now, when you look at it, this grain here mm -hmm. is going to match as you go outwards. So the movement of all of the grain coming down the tree 
as it moves, both sides are gonna move in the same direction or same kind of flow. You get all of these really cool natural inclusions in the graining of the wood that are mirroring each other on either side. All of those same inclusions will still be there if you do it the other direction. They're just not gonna, like one will be here and one will be down there. So it just won't pop as much Perfect. as far as like being right next to each other. Okay, so we know that so, everything that you make is gonna be amazing. Well, so it's like, we at least put a lot of effort into that. Yeah. yeah. They ended up going with the book match. Yeah, which is much more traditional. And I think, you know, being completely honest, it's a more functional piece with the book match. You're not losing almost two sides of it. You're only gonna lose that little bit. All right, so now that I have client approval on the way I want to orient the slabs, we need to cut and create a seam in the center to actually book match them. So the way we like to do this is with a chalk line. This is a permanent red chalk line. Don't use that on things that you're not cutting. And we'll kind of just lay out what we think is a good reference mark. That's gonna eliminate any voids. So I've done a lot of this type of jointing, book matching slabs or doing big slabs that come together in the center. And typically going with the track saw and cutting it straight down the center gives me a really, really nice joint. For some reason, it didn't work this time. We didn't like how it was joining up together. I went found the lowest spot on it, made that my zero. I'm just gonna have it flatten down to that spot. We should be good, and we're gonna use the vacuum table because the other sides are perfectly flat. And we got a new dust boot. We broke all the other ones, so. So option number two was to put this sucker onto the CNC and then use the bit that is perfectly square to cut our joint. And for some reason, that still didn't work. So we're struggling a little bit to get this gap to be perfect and we can't really figure out why. So we're gonna go back to traditional means, which means I'm gonna bear hug this thing over the joiner. This should be interesting to say the least. Third option came to the jointer and that was still off. I know that joiner's tuned up to be super precise um, and as good as we can get a joiner like that, still wasn't working. Oh God, please work. I mean, it's way better than what it was. This thing is kicking my ass. All right, so this is interesting. Got this sucker set up here and look at that. So I know this blade's pretty good, but what that's essentially telling me is that it's a ridge in the center. So our last option was put this sucker onto the vacuum holders, get it up on its side and use a hand plane in order to joint the crown out of the top. See how it's only coming off the center there though? So then you can come back in, start to check. That's already coming into square a lot. You're gonna do something like this. You wanna consistently apply as much pressure as you can from what I've learned. One, two, make sure you're measuring from your reference face. So this is our show face. That's the face I need squared. That's the face I'm measuring on. We still have a little bit here. That rules, God, that is so awesome. Amazing what money can buy. That's all. <laughs> You've outdone yourself. Can we woodwork. How many times have we tried this now? Six. I think we did it. Mark this and domino it so I can go take a nap. This is exhausting. We uh, went with our standard practice here, added a couple large dominoes in order to make sure that we had a nice strong joint in there and then that actually like quadruples the surface area of glue, which gives us a great opportunity to not create any unnecessary weakness within this table. This part here got a little squirrely when it came to glue up, but as it does with these live edge tables and anything big, we got through it and it worked out awesome. Only downside of this entire situation was the fact that myself, Jordan and Sam all dove into trying and fix it at the same time and putting our brains together. And when you're running a business, you have multiple facets going, you stop making money on those other things when the people that are in those departments have to go and put out fires in other places places. This situation right here, highly compounded the whole project itself started to pile up into the loss section for us. And just another reason why you got to have good systems and processes and a good plan before you get to something this big. This is dark type bond for walnut. Is it necessary? No. Do we like it? Of course we do. What makes this feel like? Playing with chocolate milk. It's easy to make. You just leave chocolate milk out for a while. Very thick chocolate milk. It's really cheap too. Oh, so much forearm strength. Glue applicator. Stop. You're gonna you're shit yourself. The next day. The table's dry. We just got it out of clamps. We're gonna get it on the CNC so we can go ahead and get this logo cut in. It's a multi-pore situation with the logo on this thing. Uh, but it, it is one of the 
what I like to call fun moments in this project. So let's get this thing on Miss Piggy. One of the things I like to do is embed logoing or branding, phrasing, any sort of customization into a concept. And that's kind of what we're doing here. Uh, fortunately, Miss Piggy, she's a big girl and we can do projects just like this. Hi right, everyone, Jordan here, the local total boat rep. We got the sticky stuff dispenser. It's an actual name for it. Nice pour mat, get some cups. Uh, we're gonna do black and orange. We're just gonna pour this on the CNC. Uh, we don't have any really other urgent jobs and this is gonna be a two pour stage, two stage pour process. So there's their logo. As you can see, it has an orange circle with white lettering inside. So what we're gonna do is pour the orange circle with the black lettering and then come back after it's cured over the weekend and cut in the white. It'll look crisp. Jordan, I don't think that could be closer to perfect. But can I say, that's what I'm doing. All right, it's mon it's Monday. Um, the epoxy's finally dried. Let it cure over the weekend. So the next part is we're gonna cut out. There's like a C logo here, and then a, like an arrow. Hopefully nothing moved over the weekend. One shot. Let's do it. I'm taping off, this is the bottom of the table, and we're gonna fill all these knots and crannies, nooks and crannies, with black epoxy, and pour the white epoxy in the rest of the logo. To kill two birds with one stone, and let that cure. So we use Tyvek tape, and then we'll actually, we have another big sheet that we're just gonna pull all the way over it. How's the sticky stuff dispenser? This sounds great. So the bottom of this table is ready to rock and roll as far as finish goes. So we're gonna give it a clean wipe with uh, the Rubio cleaner, squeegee some finish onto this, and then get working on the top. All right, so we've got our Rubio mix now. Get some on the surface. Probably more than we needed. And I just squeegee this stuff around part is always satisfying. And we're gonna do a little bit of a different application on the top, but this is one of the faster ways of going about this. So we got this sucker sanded down to 80 grit. What I do next is I come in with some compressed air and I spray the whole thing off. What you'll notice, especially with walnut, is once you get the air down in there, check it out. See how the grain starts to open up a little bit and you can see how much dust was in it. The intent of this is to just remove as much dust from the surface as possible before we go up in grits so we're not sanding the dust into the surface. So it's quick spritz of this and then another sanding with 120 grit and I'll mark the surface with a pencil in order to know how fast I'm going across it. So in the crack filling process, one of us missed all of these. So I'm using a putty made by Mohawk. Uh, that's black, it's a stick. You kind of just morph it together and it reacts and then uh, it'll dry within like 20, 30 minutes so we don't have to wait a whole day to get back to work and it should work pretty well for this situation. So Rubio for us is typically tried and true, but for some reason this project, it just kicked our ass. I wanted to try out using our new gem sander or buffer in order to put the Rubio on. So we went ahead and got the finish on, uh, and you usually do two coats of finish on a walnut slab. We're looking for a consistent look across the table, which I think we have. So now it's 
<clears throat> more Rubio. We're gonna use the buffer again. Buff it on, wipe it off. Box on, box off. Coat number two though, we really were finding that we just didn't like the finish. And by we, I mean me. I think what happened was I used a dirty pad or a bad pad and burnished the top of the finish in on that second run. And it ended up leaving a lot of streaks that I was not a fan of. I resanded the entire table, then reapplied Rubio again by hand, wiped it, hit it again with the red scotch Bright. We just couldn't get new pads for the polisher in. But it's just another one of those situations that popped up that we were just completely not anticipating. Usually we can put finish like Rubio on, go ahead and start doing other things on other projects, come back to it, have have no problems. It's a really fast, really efficient, really good finish. And this time it took me like, I don't know, four or five more hours of work in order to get this thing to be uh, where we wanted it to be for the client. And lo and behold, that loses me money. Even if you do have a ton of experience with something, it can always kick you straight in the groin. All right, so after close to two and a half months, the base is finally in. The client went back and forth a few times on what they were looking for. Um, but I kind of dig what they came up with. It is black painted large volume pipe with some stainless steel fasteners. Pretty awesome. So we're gonna get this stuff off the truck and get this thing put together. So now we got the base assembled. They're really heavy. Of course, John disappeared. We're gonna get these over on the floor, lay the base out how we want, and then we'll bring the table to it, mark it, flip the table, drill some threaded inserts, and then this thing will be ready for delivery. So let's, uh, let's knock this out. Sometimes the small guys carry stuff. It's mostly due to patience. We mocked up the base, and by we, I mean the green machine right here with his St. Patty's celebratory shirt on. It's looking pretty sweet. What do you think? It's actually real cool. Real cool. Something I should be doing. Come down, it's easy enough to move. I think I gotta go smidge this way. All right, so for the threaded inserts, and the reason we're using threaded inserts is because just using a screw truly wouldn't be the proper way to do something like this. That screw can work its way out over time. So what we do is essentially, this is a Woodpecker's um, handheld drill press. A couple other companies make them. I'll link one down below that we've had for years. This one just has a better stop on it. So I can line up over where I'm drilling perfectly up and down. It stops perfectly comes out and makes really, really quick work of this. Highly suggest if you do thread it in, start grabbing yourself something close to this. It, it just makes it so much nicer. Here's a little tip for the insert. We've got these ratcheting Allens and it makes it easy to put pressure up and down. You can put some CA glue in there. You could put some epoxy in there. Because we're finished, we're not doing it either. Just for the sake of not getting anything in those holes. So because uh, the table has four jointing points, we're gonna embed some C-channel into the table itself to hold it nice and flat. Most of the things we build, we build a base that has a plate on it that allows to hold things flat so we don't typically need C-channel. So it's been a while since we've done this, but this should help keep this thing from cupping, uh, especially with only having those four separate non-jointed points of contact. So route this sucker in and then uh, that's a wrap. Hi! As I stated before, this is going literally next door, so a little different delivery for us. We get to take the old Ninja Turtle over to the neighbor's place. And go figure, the clouds just decided to come out for us. Gonna beat a little rain. Balance the table. I can see that part. Wheel, bump. It's your friendly neighborhood delivery guy. All right, I'm coming in at a 90 degree angle so we don't potentially lose it on that high bump. You ready? I'm turning. Yep. Stupid ball. I'm gonna ride the brakes the whole way down, but I don't know if it's gonna stop. It is time for you to go to your home. Dun, 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 yes, Ninja Turtle, this is what a, a new shop looks like. Now we're gonna drive you through that tiny door. It looks pretty close to center. Bees down here, be awesome. Ready? Up. You might have to duck coming through the door, Jordan. Good. Spin in. Oh, it's home. I think my favorite part of installs and doing work like this, you get something in your eye while your specs are on your head. All right, gentlemen. 
Are you prepared? Yes, we're prepared. For the glory. Ta-da! Oh my gosh, that's just so freaking insane. I wish it like lit up and we had some, we can do oh fake God. explosions in post, right? Oh my God. It is uh, absolutely worse. Right. Life is even right. worse. You guys are so talented. Oh, uh, this the logo uh, is like subtle, but it's still in your face. The black and the walnut really pop and contrast together, so you get a nice juxtaposition there with the coloring. What do you guys think of that book match? I'm so glad that we did it. I like it that, that way. way. Yeah, exactly. You feel like you yeah. Feel the essence. It's beautiful. Where you guys did the inlay with the epoxy and the screening, this just like looks like it was always there. That's the blessing of working with Live Edge slabs, is that. This would typically be cut out if this was used for dimensional lumber. Because you can't cut straight through it and then you have all these voids, but filling them with epoxy and then being able to bring them to become whole and structurally sound gives a awesome look. And, and we're big fans of it. So you guys got some really beautiful slabs here. I mean, what you do is an art. I mean, it's an art. There's no other way. It's such a fine trade what you do. It's amazing. Oh, we appreciate that. We really appreciate what we did to it. We put a Put a lot of time and effort into getting to a point where we can make stuff like this. So, yeah. you know, as you guys know, it's Absolutely. it's all a culmination. So, this has been awesome. Really, like I said, appreciate you guys you so much, taking Bob. a chance really on us. And, and yeah, we're gonna have other we're gonna have other things for you. For sure. We cool. Well, let's get that sign up then, yeah. and we'll call this thing a wrap. Yeah. It started to rain, so we had to come back inside, but that's gonna be a wrap on this one. We learned a lot of lessons on this mother sucker here, and fortunately, the clients still absolutely loved the project, even though we may have lost a few dollars on it, and it took a little longer than we anticipated. If you guys wanna see more ridiculous and cool, crazy fun builds, I got a whole playlist for you right here.